Thank you for tuning in to Rise Above TV, where we are empowering humanity and supporting unity. You're watching Cracking the Codependency Code with relationship coaches Jamie Terrazas and Barry Selby. So a question for you. Who is your puppet master? Who is your puppet master? Hmm. Oh, we have some fun with this one. I was going to say, that's, like a, that's a major question right there. Who is your puppet master? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode yes. of Cracking the Codependency Code. So, yeah, let's talk a little bit about puppet master. What's a puppet, puppet. Ma- yeah, yeah, and being a puppet and, yeah. Because we can yeah. talk about that on, like, a big scale and then like a smaller scale. Let's start with the simplest example of that so people Perfect. know what you're talking about. Because the thing about relationships, especially romantic ones, is we, in the codependent framework, we tend to fall into this trap where our emotional well being is based on somebody else's opinion, somebody else's feelings, somebody else's response, somebody else's words, somebody else's treatment of us. So we choose relationships that are sometimes not the best ones for ourselves. But because by being with them, we feel better. And this dance we get into, this this challenge we get into of puppet, master and puppet type thing, is what's happening is that you're giving somebody else the strings to your emotional well-being, energetically. So if somebody else you're in a relationship with, romantically, or it probably happened in your family first, by the way, is that that person's um, mood is the, di- is the governance of how you feel. So when they feel good, you feel good. When they feel bad, you feel bad. Now you might not feel good or bad on your own, but because what they're feeling, you're choosing to feel that way in, in emulation or in response. But the, what's happening is, you're actually giving them control of your feelings, the puppet master. They become the person holding the strings to you as a puppet, because if they don't feel good or they don't like what you did, you feel bad, even though there may be nothing that you actually did. It could all be in their mind, but the way they treat you becomes your um, controlled by them, your response, or lack of response, or good feelings, bad feelings, wherever it is. And even if you're feeling good by what they said, you're still a puppet because your ability to feel good is controlled by what they do or don't do. Mm, yeah, that, that, I think they also use the word enmeshment. You know, it's like, yeah. yeah, it's like getting enmeshed. They actually know, scientifically speaking, um, intimate partners or partnerships, even people that are close to us, like friends, but when we're in close proximity, especially somebody like uh, our husband, wives, boyfriend, girlfriends, whatever, our nervous systems sync up. So our mental and emotional state, we're actually feeling that and it's impacting us, you know? So that's kind of like what you're talking about when someone's like, feeling sad or upset it's like you feel it and it's like you don't want them to feel it, and then you're taking it on as your own or sometimes they're projecting things onto you like you were talking right. about this is the thing is it's the other way too because for example if you somehow and this is the trick start feeling responsible for their feelings which is where this thing comes really into home base that's really what it is right there yeah. you feel like oh is this is my fault what do i, I need to do something about exactly it? because of a little session with kids we start to think that what our parents feel we're responsible for I mean, if you come from a divorced family, I know many adults who were children at the time who somehow blame themselves for their parents' divorce. That they feel somehow, if they do something differently, their mom would ever still be together. Mm. This is the externalization of that puppet string methodology. Um, Connection. Way of working, yeah, the dysfunction. Yeah. And so understanding that whatever happened in your childhood for your parents, even if they may have said that, you know, it was like, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be getting divorced because that's the other thing. Parents have a bad habit of laying massive guilt trips on the kids, which are inaccurate because they were emotionally upset because, frankly, most parents aren't emotionally well, well handled either. So they're working through their own dysfunction. So first, let me back up and say one thing I should have said way back at the beginning, is if you don't think you're good at this stuff yet, if you feel like you've got some challenges and you're feeling this trap of codependency, I understand how you feel, and it's okay not to feel great at this, and don't, please don't judge yourself any worse because of this is happening, because a lot of us weren't raised in families that were aware and awake. So I understand that your parents may not have been the best teachers of how not to be codependent. Mm-hmm. I know mine weren't. Yes. I'll tell you that story another time, but that's right. the thing. We all grew up in families oftentimes where our parents weren't the best possible examples for us to learn from. They may have taught us things we needed to learn, it doesn't mean they were the best parents for us to live by. So. This puppet experience is one way we have given somebody else reign, control, 
dominion over our feelings. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we can become a puppet master of somebody else because we then feel like we control somebody else's feelings, like you were saying. Yes. So it is both ways. So the, so the power, or I should say the position of empowerment, position of freedom, the movement from codependency to interdependence, which is another conversation we'll have as well. Yeah, there is a balance. <laughs> I'm seeing between. things for the head. Yes, I love it. But yes. understanding is that when we are in a place where we no longer have to be swayed by or sway somebody else's feelings so that we feel okay, that's when we become free. Mm. Because one of the biggest experiences we have when codependency no longer runs you is freedom. And for many of us, we don't know what that looks like, let alone experiencing it. So understanding that this um, hooked, in, hooked in way of being, that may feel good because you feel connected, you feel intimate, but the truth is you're feeling trapped because you're not actually in control anymore. These are the clues that codependency is not working for you. And understanding that you have a choice point, once again, to cut those strings, metaphorically speaking, so you can be free, is a reward you may not have known you could have. I would love if, if we could, and maybe it's like a, another video in itself, <laughs> but um, you know, we're talking about parents that don't always do the best they can. Well, they do the best they can with what they know, and being that a lot of parents haven't dealt with their own personal traumas, right. and they sort of have these bad habits and behaviors that they're unaware of. They're just naturally passing it on to their kids. Um, but there are also parents that are like narcissists, and that whole puppet master, it goes to like another level yes. when you have narcissistic parents. And I'll make sure to put a link, or I'm not sure how I'll be posting this or whatever, but I want to add this like really incredible video. There's all kinds of videos on YouTube where you can like learn about what is a narcissist, what happens if you have a narcissistic parent and all of these things, it's really good. Or even if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, there's valuable information there. But just, could you touch a little bit about how a narcissistic parent can all become that puppet master and how that plays into us believing certain things that they're saying about us that really isn't about us, it's about them. Right. But the narcissism in this context is the extreme case of the puppet master. Because a narcissistic parent to a child is under the belief that that kid, that kid is there to please them only. It's not about the parent taking care of the kid because, to be honest, if you're a child of a narcissist, you either do, well, this usually what happens one is one of two major extremes. One is you start to emulate and copy the same patterns, which means you carry that narcissistic pattern into your relationships. That's a whole other, that's, that requires therapy, just to be blunt. Uh, yeah, I was married to a covert narcissist. So, in this conversation, the understanding that if, you're an, if you have a narcissistic parent, the other option you'll be is you'll feel so helpless because they are so dim, dim, uh, dominating and in control. See, the thing is, is that maybe when you were three, four years old, you had no control, no freedom, no choice. But the challenge is, is those programs have been deeply seated inside of you and they carry forward. So when you're 25, 30, you still react the same way. You still get caught up in the same trap. So the thing is, as an adult, recognize what's going on is that your younger self inside, the younger aspect of yourself, is still responding like, yes sir, yes ma'am, to, to that programming from when they were a child. Mm. That's the first step, becoming aware, as I've said many times, becoming aware is the first step to all any sort of healing. Yeah. But when you start to become aware of this, then you can look at things from a new lens, which is, what if it's not true? What if it could be different? What if what they're really asking for isn't accurate? Because it is possible, yes it is possible, to free yourself from the dominion or you know, domination of a narcissistic parent. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, there's a process to taking back all parts of yourself. It's called like autonomy and sovereignty. And, and plus integration. Yes, yeah. and, and you were talking about who's really governing your thoughts and your emotions. Yeah. And that's kind of like you taking back ownership of yourself and your thoughts and emotions and learning how to not absorb and take on the, the, the thoughts and emotions about you right. and really own it. And again, this is the thing, is that understanding that you may have been in an environment with your parents who are the big people around you when you were very small and very young, mm -hmm. so you believed everything they told you. Yes. And yeah, exactly, because we don't have that prefrontal cortex developed yet, you know? So right. uh, we have no way of sort of like, well, let me discern this thought of yours here, you know? You're just taking it on like they're telling you, why is the sky blue? And they're like, oh, because somebody dumped a bunch of paint and 
and they're like, oh, and then you think it and realize that until later you realize it's that's not the case. Right. And so this is, I mean, that's a very sort of uh, simplistic way of talking about something that's actually heavy duty, so I don't want to make light of it, but certainly there is something that you can do about it. You either become the narcissist as a form of protective mechanism, like you absorb that, and, or you end up attracting people that are narcissists. To fill the gap. Yeah, and you know what? You. Sometimes it kind of can go both ways. You can yeah. play both roles, but oftentimes you'll play one more than the other, and, and so when you do have that someone that's dominating over you and trying to control you, you stay stuck in that state, in that space. So it's really important for us to... Yeah. The reality that. is that being around a narcissist, they appear to be emotionally available, but they're not. Mm -hmm. The truth is that a narcissistic energetic is one that is always needs to be fed and it can never feed. It's like a vampire and it just is looking for yeah. it's like and it's like you can never get enough blood you need more blood and so then we become sort of like its host for basically an emotional yeah. vampire yeah emotional because they're, vampire. they're taking they're sucking the emotion from other people to feel fulfilled so they're in a place of need and lack and the problem is that if you're on the receiving end of that you feel the need and lack as well mm -hmm. because you're already being depleted and pulled from so anyway yeah. so getting back to the <laughs> yeah. getting back getting to, back to, to yeah, the puppet yeah. masterpiece that's the extreme case. So for most of us, that isn't the case, just to be clear. Mm -hmm. It does happen, but not for most of us. The truth, again, is that we have the ability to become aware of what's happening and make a different choice. All of our teachings we're talking about in these videos are giving you perspectives and thoughts to have you look at things differently so you can see for yourself that one, you have a choice because you can see things differently, and secondly, you can make a different choice going forward. So in this case, you can choose to cut those strings of the puppet master once and for all, but first, you need to really become aware if that's true for you. If you are in fact being in this perpetual habit of giving your power to somebody else, giving your feelings of wholeness to somebody else's control. So it's a dominion. Now, it can sound romantic in relationships, like I trust you to love me so much that I'll feel good. But 90% of the love songs that came out the last 60 years have been saying, you know, if you leave, I'll die. That's the epitome of codependency. It really is. And that's why it's so it's interesting when you really think about words and language and how they truly are incantations and we have to be very mindful of like what it is we're saying and claiming yep. and, and sort of re reframing and changing what we're so used to saying, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm going to die without you. It's like, are well, you really going to die? It's gonna, although sometimes when you split, it literally is like a death. It feels like a death. Yeah, and there's like yeah. a whole five stages of death. Research grief. those too. Grief. Yeah, yes. grief, yeah. So, let me throw another movie quote, yeah, movie quote movie at you because this okay. is, for me, this is the most effective, impactful, and exacting statement of codependency I've heard in a movie, period. Dramatic pause. Um, there's a quote which basically from Jerry Maguire, which is, you complete me. Oh. None of us are incomplete. But that movie was so romantic, but women swooned over that quote. It's like, he said, you complete me to her. Oh my God, that's so romantic. Not. No. <laughs> yeah, maybe for like the first year. <laughs> the first week. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's a codependent trap because if you're in a place where you believe that they make you whole, and this, this, I've, I've done lectures on this stuff, I've talked about it on summits, it's in my book and I put it on in my videos. The understanding that somehow we're not 100% whole is an illusion. It's a false belief that gives us a belief somehow that the other person can make us feel complete. Well, we are not incomplete people, we are whole people. And I've said in my book, one of the chances in my book is that relationships are not 50-50, they're 100-100. And understanding that framework in this conversation is that when you start recognizing that you are whole and complete, that somebody else does not have control over you, because that's the first step. You can cut the puppet strings once and for all. I love it. Sound advice. Is there anything else we'd like to... Um, basically, I would say, remember the song from Pinocchio. I got no strings. <laughs> That's so great. Yes, exactly. And it's so funny when you brought that Jerry Maguire quote up because I bring that up a lot in my relationship coaching. And we yep. do have to learn how to be whole in our own selves, find our independence, find that balance of interdependence and independence because one extreme or the other is not healthy. So that's really what it's really all about. Thanks again for watching another episode of Cracking the Codependency Code. Be sure to tune in next time for more valuable wisdom from the awesome Barry Selby. Thank you, and the wonderful Jenny Terrazas. We'll see you soon. Be sure to like and follow Rise Above TV for more mindful content.